Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to the We Want Picks post weigh-in show. My name is Minty Betts, and I'm here to recap the entire weigh-ins from earlier this morning so you don't have to. This Saturday is UFC Denver. It'll be the first fight night in Denver, Colorado since 2018. And guys, I feel like 2018 was only two years ago, but it was six years ago. The main event will feature a women's flyweight bout between Rose Namajunas and Tracy Cortez. Even though I live only two states away, I've surprisingly never been to Colorado, and because I only work Apex fights, I probably never will. Before we begin, check out WeWantPicks.com and become a premium member for all the picks from Angelo and Jacob because they are on fire. This main event was originally scheduled between Rose Nami Yunus and Macy Barber, and I was so pumped to watch Macy fight again. I probably would have bet the house on her, but alas, we needed a replacement. So now, Thug Rose goes up against Tracy Cortez. And Tracy hasn't lost a fight in the UFC yet. She's coming in on less than two weeks' notice. She was one of the last fighters to be weighed as she missed weight, having to strip down, and she came in at 126 and a half. But after cutting off her hair, guys, I have never seen this before. Tracy cut her freaking hair to make weight at 126 pounds. That is absolutely insane and she still looks beautiful like not a lot of girls can pull off short hair meanwhile the first fighter to step on the scale was rose nami Yunus. rose is coming off a win over amanda hebas just a couple short months ago she looked fine and she weighed 124 and three quarters she's a pro by now and i would not expect her to miss weight in the co-main event we've got santiago ponzinibbio and muslim salikov at welterweight it's so funny because Santi is on the Spanish broadcast quite often, and I see him all the time backstage for Apex Fight Nights, and I often forget he's still an active fighter. So when I saw him on the card, I was like, whoa, kind of forgot there. Santi looks perfect as always, stepped onto the scale at 171 pounds. Salikov, from what I could see, looked like he was very cautious stepping onto the scale, very slowly. He looked a bit exhausted, but he did make weight at 171 as well. In the lightweight bout, we've got Drew Dober and Gian Silva. Silva is coming in on a week's notice, and he's also Jacob's lock of the week. No surprise, Jacob loves Brazilians, both men and women. He doesn't discriminate. Gian Silva came in with great energy this morning. He's having such a crazy month, too, after having coming off a second round victory to Charles Jourdain only a few weeks ago. He weighed 155, and so did his opponent, Drew Dober. This one's going to be interesting because Silva is coming in with tons of momentum here while Drew is looking to bounce back after his defeat from Moicano, so extra drive there. Next up, we've got Gabriel Bonfim versus Angelosa. Remember how big the Bonfim brothers were projected to be and how much hype was surrounding them? Gabriel Bonfim was on a three-fight tear, winning each one by first-round sub. He most recently received his first loss loss to Nicholas Dalby. He looked amazing though at 171. Looked a little nervous for a bit as it took a while to get the right number on the scale while Losa looks incredibly athletic at 170. Next up, Julian Arosa and Christian Rodriguez. Man, Arosa has been in the UFC for quite a while since I was 22 and I don't even think I've held a job that long, like as long as Arosa has been in the UFC. Uh, he came in at 145 and a half pounds and Christian Rodriguez is off of four straight wins and he is coming in as a minus 230 favorite with a 2-0 record as a favorite. He's also got the age advantage by eight years and per Yanni the Greek, in the last 10 years, the younger fighter of eight or more years won over 66% of their fights against the older opponent. Rodriguez looked good and he weighed 145 and a half pounds. To open up the main card, we've got Abdul Razak Al Hassan against Cody Brundage. Al Hassan needing this win as he is two and five his last seven and he looked phenomenal, honestly, weighing 185 pounds. Brundage last fought at UFC 300 and he is coming off a defeat to Bo Nickel. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's 185. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> He's 185 and a half pounds, so this one should be a good fight. 
The featured prelim is a good one. Joshua Van, poor guy. He's been through so much this year, so... Like, he's scheduled to fight against, I believe, Tatsuro Taira, and then was instead rescheduled to fight a few weeks after that. Then his opponent misses weight, and now he's coming in on short notice, but I actually really like this matchup, and I enjoy watching Joshua Van fight. He stepped on at 125 pounds, and Charles Johnson is the lucky opponent that gets to face Joshua Van. He came in at 125 and a half. Time for the ladies, a flyweight matchup between Fatima Klein and Jasmine Jazdavicius. Klein is making her UFC debut and she has yet to lose a fight in her professional career. My rule in betting is to never bet on a fighter making their UFC debut no matter how good their record or how their performance has been lately. Statistically, over 57% of fighters in their first ever UFC fight lose. And that's with a sample size of over 500 fighters. She weighed 125 as well as Jasmine, who is coming off a victory. And do you ever just look at fighters who are the same weight as you? And you're like, wow, I could look like that. I could have that body, but I like food too much and I hate sweating. So that's me with Jasmine. On to the bantamweights, Montel Jackson and Damon Blackshear. Both men coming in on short notice. Jackson came in at 135 pounds, and Blackshear has abs you can see from miles away, my friends. He also came in at 135. Another women's flyweight bout, Luana Santos, whose original opponent was Viviani Araujo, and I loved her, but now we get Maria Agapova. She's one and three, her last four, and stepped on the scale at 125. Santos weighed 125 as well and looked gorgeous. Next, Andre Petrosky and Josh Frem. Both coming off of some losses, but man, Petrosky looks like a beast at 185 and a half pounds. Josh Frem was the final fighter to be weighed. He looked good at 186 pounds. Last but not least, I have been waiting to see my friend Evan Elder fight again. It has been exactly a year since he's fought, and he's so ready for this, guys. He's actually the largest favorite on the board, which is absolutely insane. Minus 410 and fluctuating. Both Darius Flowers and Evan Elder stepped up on four days' notice, and that's why it's insane, but don't sleep on this one. Evan looks great as always, and he weighed a perfect 170 pounds. Flowers also weighed 170 and looks good. That wraps it up, guys. Although I am looking forward to quite a few bouts on here. I'm not giving out any picks for this one and may sit this one out because it almost feels like it, this card was just very quickly put together. Out of the control of fighters in UFC, of course, you can't control if you get injured or ill prior to the fight, but it feels like something we should be prepared for every single fight week now with fighter replacements. So... That does it, guys. Thanks for listening to the shenanigans. Support the site. Support this channel by subscribing. And follow me on Twitter. I'll never call it X. Instagram and TikTok at MintyBets. Good luck to everyone. And be kind to everyone.